guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Game, and something about on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Conway. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Alrighty. Careful. You freeze and have to put out a hand to catch the railing. Oh, apologies for the outburst. Please do not miss your step, but I think you are about to step on my glasses. You glance down to discover your paw scant centimeters from said glasses, and a night pair at that. You find better footing and carefully bend down to retrieve them, holding the glasses by the bridge of the middle. So, so I was. I'll hold them in that case. It's probably safer that way. Thank, thank you. And you wouldn't have wanted to damage them. The frames are thin but made of gold. They look expensive, aristocratic even. Now that you have a chance to examine them up close, the man himself has a similar sort of bearing. His black suit is fancier than anything else you've seen aboard, aboard ship, even from the officers. It would have been out of place ashore, too. Even the men who dress in their Sunday finest for services don't dress like this. His demeanor, though, is hardly so imposing. He stays quiet, and you feel compelled to break the silence. I saw you up here and wanted to know if everything was... Well, there was something the matter. Oh, are you the surgeon? Uh, you're not the surgeon, are you? He asks, peering at you without the benefit of his glasses. I'm not. I don't know who the surgeon is, now that you mention it. I came aboard earlier today. I just it just looked like you were having a bit of a rough time. Well, that was a very kind that was very kind of you to take note in that case. He's still holding the rope tightly, and his ears remain slightly drawn. The whole of his body indeed seems to have wilted. You do still look a bit under the weather. Do you need help? No, no, no. I will be fine, I am sure. I just just seasickness, that is all. I'm afraid I am not used to this. Well, it can happen to anyone. I wouldn't think anything of it. Really? Because... He shudders and shuts his eyes for a, tightly for a moment, taking deep breaths through his nose before he manages to calm himself down. Because there is certainly some evidence to the contrary to anyone observing this tableau, lake, this tableau keenly. Or absence of evidence, if you would rather formulate it that way. What? I am the only one on the ship hanging over the railing, while some... He grimaces, although he seems to be able to recover faster this time... A nice young man holds their glasses. <sighs> After a moment, he tries to smile and succeeds. Mostly. I do appreciate the thought, though. The two of you lapse back into silence while the African wild dog steadies himself again. You find yourself grateful that you're able to enjoy this. For the moment, everything is fairly calm. There's the distant sound of the crew conversing and the creak of the ship's timbers and rigging. The rhythmic splash of waves against the hull as Conway truly gets underway towards her destination. You know it can't last, of course. For now, you're promised a good meal. Everyone is still reasonably calm, so reasonably clean. Spirits are good and tempers are at a low boil. Wolf, accept Wolf accepted. But for now, you enjoy it. You only wish your companion could do the same. You're a passenger, right? One of the other sailors, he's, uh, he said he'd never seen you before. I am, yes. I suppose I do not much the, look, uh, look the part of a sailor, either, do I? It was not required for me to travel incognito, and, well, I am fond of these clothes, I admit. Uh, where does... Before you can ask him where he's headed, the painted dog abruptly leans over the railing and throws up again. You think about trying to offer some assistance, even if only a reassuring pat on the arm, before deciding to err on the side of discretion and look the other way. Uh, more fond of the clothes than the conveyance. I have already become something of a reluctant passenger, to tell you the truth. I see. It is truly an idyllic scene at which you find yourself gazing. The sky above has taken on the orange tint of brilliant sunset. Some additional sails have been set, and the rustle with the minutest changes in wind... But until you gain truly open waters, most of them remain un most of them remain furled. The masts and rigging cut sharp black slices through the beckoning glare of sunset. A few gulls have followed the ship out this far. They wheel, nimble, dancing silhouettes above the horizon. And next to you, the unfortunate wild dog heaves again. And again. Fortunately, by this point, he seems to have emptied himself completely. He straightens up and tugs his neatly tailored jacket back into place. Dear Lord, I am quite sure by this point nothing is even left. What would I... what I would not give for my body to simply... The painted dog pauses as if considering whether he needs to be sick again. No, I think that is better. Uh, what I would not give, I was saying, for my body to simply leave me alone. What do you want to do? Try looking at the horizon. That should help. Does it? Why would it ever do a thing like that? I'm not sure. I'm not a philosopher or a doctor or whatever you need to be. Seems like he could use some solid counsel, though. You figure it's not worth telling him that it's just a story you heard from some of the old hands in port. 
I think it helps remind you that it's just uh, that it's just you that's moving, not the whole world. You have something to focus on instead of the constant, you know, the up and down, up and... The dog holds up a hand to stop you. I understand your meaning. I suppose... Well, I suppose it can hardly make it any worse, can it? He makes a game, att he makes a game attempt at following your advice, putting his hands on the railing and staring landwards. The shore is still visible, black and formless, like the ragged edge of torn paper separating the sea and twilight. What a ghastly thing, really. What is? All this water. Leaving the land behind. I suppose you would not understand. He laughs. The sound is quiet and rueful. A sailor such as yourself must find it rather curious indeed. No, no, not at all. It's my first time, actually. Ah, what brought you aboard? You are a passenger, too? He eyes you curiously, but unlike Arthur or Wolf or Samuel, you don't feel the same kind of judgment. It is a more congenial sort of inquisitiveness. Perhaps he's happy to have something else to think about. No, I'm part of the crew. I just joined today. They call me a landsman, which I suppose is a sort of rank. You shrug, self-deprecating. The newness of the experience is something the two of you share, after all. Or it's just the polite form of what they'll call me when I, when I can't desert. It must be exciting. I hope it is, at least, to be giving up your home like this. It is. It still is, I mean. It doesn't quite seem real. I've always dreamt of seeing my hometown disappear, and now? The Call of the Unknown. An adventuresome spirit. Maybe, yes. I wanted to see something new. Something I'd never find on the homestead. I'm not sure just what yet, though, but... You will find it, I'm sure. It doesn't sound naive. Not at all. Oh, excuse me. There is always a point when a young man like yourself must want to spread his wings, or hers, perhaps. He catches himself and turns back to the horizon to ca calm himself while he ponders that before giving us a decisive nod. Yes, certainly. I, I think it must be a universal instinct. I'm sure everyone feels the call in the core of their very being. I just wish it involved more carriages and fewer boats. For me, there was only so far I could, could hope to go on land. Oh, what is it you are leaving behind? Your nest, as it were. My family has a small homestead, and in a good year there are so many mouths to feed it as there are plots to feed them with. In a bad year? Ah, I see. But no, it isn't quite that simple, is it? Not so pragmatic. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong. We get by, got by, we got by... We could sustain ourselves, but I don't think farm life was for me, not forever. That is understandable as well. Spend your whole life in one place, and the temptation to see other worlds would be terribly difficult to ignore. Not to say that the roving impulse is felt by all of us equally. There must be separate fashions for separate kinds. The spheres of our various interests and talents. Am I rambling? I don't know. A little. My spirits are lifting. That is what has happened. I do think looking towards the horizon helped, after all. Maybe it is time I saw it for what it truly was, for what it truly is. That seems to be a rather philosophical statement, but the painted dog is clearly a man of some intellect. You try to meet him on the same ground. Um, a nest? No, no, I mean, could I have my glasses back, if you would be so kind? I can hardly see you, let alone our destination or our origin. He holds out his hand. You're not sure he'd even need the, need the other to support himself, now, uh, let alone both. And you carefully set the glasses in the painted dog's palm. He places them smartly on the bridge of his muzzle, and then adjusts them precisely until he's satisfied with the fit. Much better, thank you. Of course, is the water any less troubling? Objectively, no, but I shall manage. So, why the Conway, then? If you're not a sailor and you don't even like traveling... Uh, traveling is lovely. In the right circumstances, of course. It is a change of, change of scenery for myself, as you might have imagined. He gestures at himself, and with the glasses, the gentle ear... The genteel air is well and truly cemented. Uh, coming aboard with no mess kit or fishing tackle or whatever sort of accoutrements, I'd be I would uh, <laughs> I'd be expected to have as a proper tar. The accoutrements of your cooter. Sorry, I'm an old school protein fan, protein pill. It is, despite his scholarly bearing, a number of words and phrases you also don't recognize. Perhaps Julian can help later. For now, you focus on the painted dog. But you wanted to change the change of scenery? Is that not the rub? I am being brought over by my by my patron, who desires that I work on her estate in the South. Paid to travel the world? That sounds like quite a lovely offer. I guess you're not sleeping with the sailors, either. I am not, no. The accommodations are quite reasonable, all things considered. But the voyage is, to be honest, mostly done from necessity. Even if I were one of those 
professorial types installed like a statue in a library. Not everything can be done that way. Such as... Ah, I am to turn my energies and industrials in full on the diversity of flora in that region, thereby to assemble a compendium of such notes and such conclusions as may lead to profitable ends. That sounds important, right? He smiles, his mood improving by the minute. I shall gather plants to see if any of them might be useful to my patron in her business. She's bringing me down there to allow me to do my work. As I said, I cannot do it in a library. Many of them have not been documented at all. At least not in languages any of us speak. I will be the first. It, it sounds like you have a wonderful opportunity, then, at being paid for everything, living in a fancy estate, at traveling without needing to get your fur soaked in towel and grease. A smile becomes a little gentler. True, I could not care less about the money, but the discoveries, that is a different matter. I may have preferred to stay home, truth be told, but when else would I be able to see the other side of the world like this? Never? <laughs> Not the way you might, obviously. Paying for the voyage myself, no matter what accommodation, would be out of the question. I am quite sure of that. And I am not cut out to be a sailor. Even once I learned to keep my food down and my eyes looking elsewhere, I could not do it. Why? What makes you say that? Why could I not be a sailor? It's not... it's just not... it's just not... me, I suppose, for lack of any better or more useful way of putting it. It is for some people. As if he might have overstepped, he clears his throat and gestures to you. And nothing against you, of course. Far from it. I, am, I meant to say... I mean to say that it is... I am not made for it. That is the problem. It is too dangerous. Too physical. I... He trails off and lets his hand fall. His hand fall. I am simply not adventurous in that fashion. Sure you are, though. You're sailing around the world right now. You said so yourself. That sounds pretty plenty adventurous to me. Sailing around a very particular world, my friend... A very particular one indeed. Here I have a little cabin all my own. There I shall have the estate and perhaps even an assistant to help with my work. I feel the world around which I am sailing is only incidentally the one shared by the good ship Conway. I suppose, but it doesn't look that comfortable for you. An artifact of, an artifact of my softness, though, is it not? Even once that is passed, no matter what, I will not be the one climbing up these... Are, are these ropes they climb? I think they're the ropes they pull on to set the sails. Nobody's aloft right now, but recall the ones you saw with their sailors scrambling up and point them out. Uh, those are the ones they'll be climbing. He looks at you expectantly, with his brow raised. Wheel. Wheel. Uh, those are the ones we'll be climbing. Right, so, and when there is a storm, my duties will be to keep my glasses about me and my food in my stomach. Yours will be to keep the ship sound and all aboard her safe. He regards you with what, despite his station, seems almost like a gen like genuine respect. But that's what I am cut out for. I prefer it that way. Before you can answer, the ship's bell chimes. In case you didn't understand the meaning, a sailor's voice raises above it. Dinner is ready. How are you feeling? Well enough to eat? I suppose so, yes. Ah, that's a relief. The cook is quite good, I'm told. Something to look forward to. Well, I will not be dining with the crew, unfortunately, but I hope to find out nonetheless. Perhaps... perhaps we will meet again, do you suppose? Thank you for the company. I would certainly not mind sharing it again. Well then, I... yes, I hope so. Enjoy your dinner, um... He cants his head, peering at you curiously before it strikes him. Oh, goodness, a thousand apologies. I am Nomax. It is a pleasure meeting you. He holds out his hand for you to shake, and while yours is clean enough to feel the gesture permissible, you take him up on the offer. It's nice to meet you, Nomax. I'm James. James, yes, I see. A pleasure meeting you as well. Alright, y'all, I'm actually gonna pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Big Rose Silver-tier patron, Cade Simmer, and then Go Bud Bum Beyond is greatly appreciated. And thanks to our two gold-tier patrons, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye